Welcome again to students of Bavistock Academy and Bavistock in the City. This video is going to look how you can best answer question 1 of paper 3 in the IGCSE English. Before we look at this video, I would like to remind you that you can pause or rewind the video whenever you want to. We will have a look first at some general advice for answering paper 3. In paper 3, most marks will come from our writing techniques. In question 1, however, and this is a question that we're going to be looking at today, there are 10 marks available for assessment of our reading. Reading marks. This is how you gain those 10 marks. Have we understood what we have read in the article? Can we use what we have read to answer the question appropriately? Many students lose marks in this section. We will not lose marks because we will correctly use the material in our answer. For example, if we are asked to discuss how money should be spent, we must not discuss fundraising methods. That would gain you no marks at all for the section on reading marks. The article that we have to read will be between 700 and 800 words long. We must not panic when we see the article. It is a long piece of writing, but we are all capable of reading this amount of writing and we are given plenty of time in the exam to read it properly and carefully. We will be asked to read the article and then use the information to write in a different form. This simply means that we might read some dialogue speaking between two people and then we may have to use the information that we have read to write an article for the school magazine or to write a letter to our local newspaper about the information in the dialogue. This will make more sense when we look at an example of question one. Remember, of course, that the article could be in any form at all. It might not be in dialogue, although the question example that we're going to look at today is in dialogue, but it, this may not be the case in every exam. We must do a brief plan before we start writing. We shouldn't spend too long on the plan, but we will gain more marks if our writing shows that we have thought about what we want to write and are not simply putting down random thoughts as we write our answer. We must remember to whom we are writing. If, for example, we are writing a letter to apply for a job, we would write in a more formal way than if we were writing to a friend. However, we must not be too informal or casual if we are asked to write to a friend or write an article for the school magazine. Written language is less informal than spoken language. We must remember that this is an exam, and even if we think we might not write like this to a friend, in the exam we do as we have been taught to do. We should try to put ourselves into the shoes of the people in the article. This means that we should try to be someone in the article. If we do this, we will have a much better understanding of the article and so be able to complete the writing task much more easily. And finally for this section on general advice, we must remember what we have learnt. We must not leave our knowledge at home. We must write in paragraphs use our powerful adjectives and conjunctions, punctuate correctly, and everything else that we have learned to do. This is the article that I have chosen for us to have a look at question one and how best to answer the question. Mina Patel is a 16-year-old pupil at Longwood High School. Mina and some of her friends have been working on a school project called The Diet and Fitness of Teenagers Today. 
As the group's representative, Mina has a meeting with the head teacher to discuss the report and to persuade him to help raise awareness of their project's findings. Read the following transcript of the meeting and then answer question one. Head teacher, come in. Come in, Mina. How can I help you? Mina, well, sir, it's to do with the report I gave to you. You know, about the type of food our pupils are eating, if they exercise or not, and, well, about the rise in the number of bullying incidents over the last year. Have you had a chance to look at it yet? Head teacher. Yes, Mina, I've given it some thought, but you know how busy it is at the end of term. Don't you think that diet and exercise play an equally important role in the pupils' home lives? Mina. Yes, but it's a type of food and snacks on offer here at school which is worrying, sir. Take the vending machines, for example. They're full of sweets, crisps and sugary drinks. Also, the food on sale at mealtimes, for those who do eat lunch here, is limited and mostly pre-cooked. Head teacher. But there's a choice to suit everyone, and then there's a healthy option, of course. Mina. Sorry, sir, but our research shows that the main diet of most pupils here at Longwood consists of burger and chips, or pizza and chips, or just chips fried in unhealthy fat. Head teacher. There's baked potatoes and salad, of course. Mina. By the time students get to lunchtime, it takes more than a limp salad or an overdone potato to satisfy them. They'll always go for chips or pizza if they're on offer daily. Look at our survey. 98% of pupils eat chips at every meal. And then there's dessert. Head teacher. Ah, we have low-fat yoghurts and... Mina. Sorry, sir, but extra large muffins and chocolate biscuits at half the price of a small yoghurt will always be the student's first choice. They're full of sugar. It's not just the sweetness that makes them so popular. Research has shown that we actually become addicted to the sugar and additives in these health hazards and that they adversely affect concentration levels. Teachers report poor performance from pupils after lunch times. Head teacher. Well, students don't have to eat these items. They also have the option of a packed lunch. Mina. Well, that's just it, sir. Also revealed in our survey was the type of food brought to school in students' lunch boxes. Usually it's white bread sandwiches, salty crisps, and a chocolate bar or cake and fruit juice. They usually eat that lot at break and later on stock up on more chocolate and fizzy drinks from the vending machines. Head teacher, I can see that you've certainly done your homework, Mina, but there are more important problems that the staff have to deal with. Bullying, for instance. Mina, I understand, sir, but bullies often attack those children who are different in some way. We've seen loads in the newspapers about the problem of bullies singling out overweight pupils and making their lives miserable. It's even worse for those pupils who can't join in games because they have a weight problem. Head teacher. Yes, I know. What also concerns me is just how unfit many adolescents are. We have excellent facilities for physical education here, and yet your study suggests that many students are opting out of these lessons for a variety of reasons. Parents allow their offspring too much time in front of the television and let them use playstations day and night. Well, that and a diet of takeaways, according to your findings, must play a part in the, this problem, surely. Mina, you're right there, sir, but it's here at school where we can all help make a difference. Raising awareness is a starting point, and I wondered if you'd mind promoting this writing competition, sir. We saw it in the quality newspaper, Today's World. Here's a page. 
They're looking for interesting factual articles written from a teenager's perspective. Schools are being asked to submit their three best entries on a topic of their choice. The school that produces the winning article will receive two new computers and the student will be invited to spend a day on the newspaper. Would you help promote this, sir? Head teacher, I'm with you. We have some good writers at this school. However, we need to get students to think of some solutions to this health and fitness issue, as well as outlining the dangers of being a couch potato. Mina, our little group came up with a ban the junk campaign, but I'm sure our students will have much better ideas than that when they write their articles. Head teacher, I could do my best to get alternative and tasty lower fat meals on the menu at lunch times. Perhaps I could get water coolers instead of the fizzy drinks machine. Mina, could you announce the competition in assembly, sir? Here's the page from the newspaper outlining the details students will need in order to enter. Number of words, closing date and so on. Could you enlarge it, please, and we'll put some copies up around the school? Headmaster. Yes, Mina. I'll do my best to get some enthusiasm going tomorrow in assembly. Longwood High winning a competition in a quality newspaper. Now that really would be good news. You make sure and enter, Mina. What we have to do. Question 1. You are Mina Patel. You want to write a winning article on the diet and fitness of teenagers today for today's world competition. You should start off with a clear account of the problems at Longwood High, offer suggestions to make the school a fit, healthy and happy place to attend. Select your material from the transcript above. Pay attention to the order in which you use it. This is why a plan is important. Part of the criteria for this question is that you pay attention to the order in which you use it. You may include your own ideas to improve the situation at school, but they must be related to what you've read. So that's what we have to do. And this piece here is the criteria that we have to meet, as well as, of course, these two points here. That are made. We should write about one and a half to two sides, allowing for the size of your handwriting. Up to ten marks will be given for the content of your answer, that's the reading marks. In other words, have we understood what we have read and are we able to appropriately use what we have read? That is the content of our answer and up to 15 marks for the quality of your writing. That's the use of paragraphs, spelling, punctuation, and everything else that we have learned to make the quality of our writing the best that it possibly can be. And that, of course, totals up to 25 marks overall for this question. We will first of all look at an answer that would gain a grade C in the exam. Now remember, you can pause or rewind this video whenever you want to. And I think you probably will want to because you'll need to look over what you have just read and what you have just heard from me. This is a grade C answer. The diet and fitness of teenagers. Longwood High is a centre of high cholesterol and unbalanced diets, bullying and lack of awareness. Teenagers love junk food and are really spoiled with what the canteen sells. The junk food includes burgers, chips, pizzas, muffins, chocolate biscuits, sweets, sugary drinks, etc. From the following, one would think that the school plays a bad role in promoting better health and diets. 
Those who'd rather have healthy food, such as low-fat yogurts, certainly find the price too high. By this, we can say that to eat healthier at Longwood, one would need to have the financial resources. This isn't a bad first page. Um, we've got one or two minor little errors, for example, from the following. Well, it's really from the above, not the following. We've already seen what junk food is offered in the canteen, so it's not the following, it is the above. This isn't too bad for the first page starter. Longwood seems to be more concentrated on their income. They've noticed that since there are more potential buyers for junk food, then it ought to be supplied. As a result of unbalanced diets and high cholesterol, students who are not sportive or do not exercise tend to gain weight and end up in obesity. This therefore raises another problem, bullying. Obese students tend to be victims on this. Bullies tease them about their weight and leave them depressed and discriminated. Again, this isn't a bad second page, but there are one or two points that you've probably noticed, but I will point them out to you. We've, first of all, we've got a, a spelling error here on cholesterol. Students who are not sportive, sportive isn't the best word to use there, Students who are not interested in sport, children, students who do not like to play sport, would be better than students who are not sportive. And here, end up is two words. It's not one hyphenated word, as this student has written here. We don't end up in obesity. We would end up obese. And then in the final paragraph on this page... The last sentence, bullies tease them about their weight, that's fine, and leave them depressed, that's fine, and discriminated. You're not discriminated, you are discriminated against. And let's have a look at the final page of this grade C answer. The third and last problem is awareness of the problem. Longwood doesn't seem to inform the students about their consumption. Lack of awareness, you'll agree, is serious. If students were more aware of these health hazards, wouldn't the rate of junk food consumption lower? For a better score, therefore, I suggest that junk food is lessened and that their price increases and that of healthy food lowered. Measures should be taken to stop bullies from discriminating students' differences. Regular exercise should be compulsory to have fitter students that are in better shape. And finally, students should be made aware of what their junk food intake contains and causes. Prevention is better than cure, so these are the measures to take. Now again, this isn't a bad last page, last two paragraphs, but I think there's a few points here that need pointing out to you. And this one here, this sentence, lack of awareness, you'll agree, is serious. Now, when you see you'll agree, this means that the writer is talking to somebody, talking to a person. This article is meant to be written as a competition in a newspaper and therefore you wouldn't talk to a particular person. That is a problem with this answer and bringing in things like you'll agree. Let's have a look further down. We've got the problem again here of bullies from discriminating students. Again, we need the word against here. As I said to you before, you don't discriminate students. You discriminate against students' differences. We've got a punctuation problem here. We should have an apostrophe after the S because we're talking about differences of more than one student. So it's students apostrophe S. This sentence 
that begins with measures and ends with causes. It's not a bad sentence, but students should be made aware of what their junk food intake contains and causes is a little bit little bit unclear. I know what the student means. You know what the student means. But it's not good English. It's not good written English. Let us have a look now at the marks that have been awarded. Content marks 4 out of 10. That's have you understood what you have read and are you able to use what you have read in an appropriate manner? Well, this one would only get 4 out of 10, slightly under half marks. Writing marks is better, 10 out of 15. That is much better. And these are some comments that an examiner would make. This is a reasonably clear account, although the last paragraph is less coherent. The account commences appropriately, but quickly dif d drifts towards spoken expression. And in paragraph three, this is an example of spoken, of, um, spoken expression. By this we can say, and as I mentioned to you with the material on the previous page, we shouldn't talk as to an individual person. We shouldn't be saying by this we can say it's spoken expression not written the second paragraph of the comments because of the short paragraphs the points made aren't developed and the writing has a rather jumpy feel to it however whilst there are some vocabulary and spelling errors grammar and punctuation are generally good a lot of points have been made but not developed and the student has included some original ideas. That's why the writing marks received 10 out of 15. A lot of points have been made, which is good, but because of the short paragraphs, many of these points have not been developed, and that reduces the writing marks. But nevertheless, this is a grade C answer. You don't have to be perfect to get a grade C answer, obviously, otherwise there wouldn't be grade A, grade A's awarded. But 50, sorry, 14 out of 25 would get you a grade C. Let us have a look now at what you would need to write in order to get a grade A for your article. The diet and fitness of teenagers today. With so many fast food chains sprouting up around the world, it's no wonder today's teenagers are becoming overweight. They opt for the cheapest, quickest and most tasty foods, which end up being the least healthy. And lately, this problem has spread to schools. Longwood High School has a problem similar to many others. At lunch times, the students are rushing into the canteen and buying the most satisfying and great tasting foods, burgers, pizza and chips. Whilst these foods may appeal to the taste buds, they are full of processed sugar and unhealthy fats. If these choices are offered all the time, they will be the students' first pick. Let us now have a look at these two paragraphs on this first page. The student here in this first paragraph has met the first criteria that the problems of Longwood High School are identified. Use of language is, is good. Many fast food chains sprouting up around the world. That's a nice word to use. We've got good punctuation, it's, which is a contraction of it is. We've got good punctuation here, today apostrophe s for today's teenagers. We have got good vocabulary, they opt. It means choose, you could have used choose. Opt, I think, is a nicer word here. 
And then the paragraph finishes with, lately, this problem has spread to schools. That's a good opening paragraph. The student has written the full title of the school, Longwood High School. Not just Longwood or Longwood High, Longwood High School. It doesn't matter, but it's more appropriate language. Remember, this is an article for a competition in a national newspaper. People who are not from the area of Longwood High School, if you just wrote Longwood, they wouldn't know what you meant. Longwood High School clearly identifies that it is a school, it's a high school, and that it's got a problem similar to many other schools. The problem that was identified in paragraph one. We've got, again, good adjectives, most satisfying, great tasting, powerful adjectives for the noun foods. This is a nice opening page, a good two paragraphs that have been developed. Let us have a look at the second page and these two paragraphs. Vending machines are also a huge factor to this school's problem. Sugar drinks, chocolate bars and salty crisps tempt students daily. Scientists have proven that we can become addicted to the sugars and add additives in these junk foods and therefore students' concentration levels will be affected later on in the day. After lunch times, the performance in classrooms is poorer than before, so eating right will benefit your health as well as your studies. An obvious solution is to encourage students to bring packed lunches from home and discourage them from the pizza and burgers offered in the canteen. But a recent survey on the contents of students' lunch boxes has confirmed the failure of this approach. Most lunches contained white bread sandwiches, crisps, chocolate bars and a... And then we've run out of space, we go to the next page. But just let's have a look at what we've got here. This paragraph here is using so much of the information in the transcript. In terms of content marks, this paragraph's going to score highly. Scientists have proven that was in the transcript. What have they proven? That we become addicted in the transcript. Concentration levels will be affected again from the transcript. This is an excellent paragraph in terms of content. But in terms of writing, it's very good. We've got nice words such as tempt students. Not a difficult word, but it's a nice word. We've got good vocabulary, we've got good punctuation. Students' concentration levels, more than one student's, more than one student, so the apostrophe comes after the S. Let's have a look at this second pro um, paragraph or part paragraph. We know, again, from the transcript the results of the recent survey. So again, good content marks here. We know that the students' lunch boxes have confirmed the failure of this approach because that was in the transcript. Let's now have a look at the continuation of this paragraph and the following material. Okay, the previous bit said chocolate bars and a fruit-flavoured drink. This is no healthier than the meal served in the canteen. Students cannot escape from eating chips and drinking fizzy drinks if that is all that is given to them. Longwood High School has given the health problem a bit of thought, but have not completely put their plans into motion yet. Baked potatoes and salads are offered in the canteen for lunch and low-fat yoghurts for dessert. But with burgers and chips sitting right next to the healthy options, the result is obvious. In the survey, we have found that 98% of students eat chips with each meal. 
the school needs to take action and begin to phase out the unhealthy foods before it is too late. So let's have a look here. Again, we've got good content marks in this paragraph and again in this paragraph. The material from the transcript is being used. We've got good punctuation here. Fruit flavoured drinks, hyphenated, fruit hyphen flavoured, good punctuation there. Nice little exclamation mark there. And it is an exclamation, isn't it? This is no healthier than the meal served in the canteen. That's an exclamation. And the exclamation mark has been used appropriately. We then go on in the second paragraph, this paragraph here, about what Longwood High School are attempting to do to address the problem. We've got the baked potatoes and salads from the transcript, the low-fat yogurts again from the transcript, and then we finish this paragraph with the school needs to take action and begin to phase out the unhealthy foods before it is too late. We're now dealing with the problem that Longwood High School and many other schools are facing. And this student has written what the school needs to do before it's too late, phase out the unhealthy foods. So now let us have a look what this page has given us. Schools claim that they need to deal with bigger problems such as bullying first. But bullying is closely linked with food. Bullies pick on the kids that are different and often overweight. By solving the health and diet problem, the schools are also tackling the bully problem as less kids will be overweight. There are solutions to this daunting problem. First of all, remove the unhealthy food options slowly replacing them with low-fat choices. The vending machines can also be altered. Instead of chocolate bars and fizzy drinks, they could be cereal bars and bottled water. After-school sports for everyone to join can be introduced, and teachers can treat, teach nutrition in PE classes. And at home, parents can encourage children to watch less television and do more fun outdoor activities. So again, let's have a look what this page is giving us. Again, this first paragraph is giving us good content marks. In the transcript, the head teacher said that the school needs to deal with bigger problems such as bullying first. Again, from the transcript. And then again in the transcript, Mina mentioned that bullying is often closely linked with food because bullies pick on kids that are different and often overweight. Again, from the transcript. This second paragraph on this page, the candidate, the student, is writing about what can be done to deal with the problem. There are solutions. Nice bit of vocabulary here, a daunting problem. It's a challenging problem, it's not going to be easy. Daunting is a nice word to express that. And then the student goes on to say how the solutions can be implemented. First of all, nice, remove the unhealthy food options slowly. So the student isn't trying to get rid of everything that is bad in one go, slowly. Then the student goes on to talk about the vending machine here and how that can help solve the problem. Remove the chocolate bars and fizzy drinks and replace them with cereal bars and bottled water. Another solution is mentioned here the after-school sports for everyone to join. Teachers treat teaching nutrition in PE classes. And then 
the problem at home that the head teacher mentioned can be dealt with here. Parents can encourage children to watch less television and do more fun outdoor activities. There's a lot of material in this page. Two good paragraphs, several points mentioned, and the points have been developed. And this is the final paragraph here. The changes will be slow, but progress can be made if the right approaches are used. Hopefully, in the next few years, the diet and fitness of teenagers will have a much brighter future. I like this sentence here because what the student has done here is step back from the details, step back from all of the information that has been presented and the student is reminding the reader of the main message of this article. It's a nice paragraph, nice concluding paragraph. So let's have a look at the marks. Content marks, 8 out of 10. Excellent. Writing marks, 12 out of 15. 20 out of 25 would give you a very comfortable grade A. A good response. And well deserving of the grade A. Let us look now at the examiner's comments. This is clearly a good answer to the question. However, this student, like many others, veered towards general essay writing rather than providing a journalistic article for a specific audience and purpose. That is why this student didn't get maximum marks for the writing section. Nevertheless, this answer has been written in a persuasive convincing style and the student has covered most of the issues and details from the transcript in a thorough manner. The final paragraph is particularly effective as the student has managed to step back from the details of the information to, write, to remind the reader of the main message. So it's not perfect but again you don't need to be perfect to get a grade A. It is clearly a very good answer from a student who has written very well, who has read the transcript carefully and thoroughly, and I would imagine most likely underlined the main points, which you did in paper one, and you must do in paper three, thus making it easier to write the article because the main points are highlighted and are in front of you in the separate reading booklet. It will be easier for you in the exam to go back and check what is in the transcript because the transcript is in, as I've just said, the separate reading booklet. So it'll be easier than looking at this video. You will be able to look back at the words that you have highlighted, the main points that you want to write in your article. And you will have, done, of course, written a little plan of how you are going to write this article and the order that you want to write things in. We now have all the information for us to write a good answer to question one on paper three. In our next video, we will look at how to get the best possible marks for question two on paper three. Good luck.